So one of the fun things that I get to do as I travel around the country and speak to different groups and as we shoot the television show and travel to different nurseries is I get to collect really cool and unusual plants. And so I thought since we were at my house today and, and we have an opportunity to look around my garden a little bit, uh, that I would show you some of the really unusual things that I've collected over the years, some of which are hardy and some of which are not. And one of my favorites that is not, that I have to dig in up and take in every fall, is this beautiful elephant ear that's in front of me. This is actually quite a rare variety called Okinawa silver, Alocasia Okinawa silver. And uh, it's a smaller growing plant. A lot of times plants that are very highly variegated like this one is, uh, are not quite as vigorous, but it really is a beauty. Some of the other unusual things that I've collected over the years, I'll pick up a couple of things down here on the ground. This is one that I haven't uh, obviously gotten in the ground yet, but believe it or not, this is a euonymus, and it's a variety called Rokujo variegata, and it grows in this very tightly congested um, little finger form growth, very unusual, and uh, it will never get more than about 18 inches tall and wide, but really, really unusual growth habit and a pretty little plant and a euonymus that you don't ever have to worry about becoming uh, invasive or anything like that. And then the other plant that I was going to show you that I just picked up recently is this really beautiful variegated ginger. This is a variety called Mioga or uh, Dancing Crane is another name that it goes by. This is actually hardy all the way up into zone six. I've left it in this pot for now because I want to grow it up a little bit bigger before I plant it outdoors. Uh, big enough at least to have one division off of it that I can keep inside uh, just in case. But I've actually seen this plant growing in a garden uh, all the way up north of St. Louis and it had been hardy in the ground for five years. So um, that's even zone five. So we're, we're pretty sure that this is going to be a very solid zone six plant and a real beauty. Well, I've always loved tropical plants. We've shown you a couple already, as well as some hardy ones. But a favorite group of tropicals has always been banana plants. I grew my first ones from seed when I was about nine or 10 years old uh, from some that I ordered from a catalog. And I'm still growing bananas today. And uh, this one has done me the favor of flowering this year. This is a variety called Musa ornata Red Jewel. The bananas don't bloom every year, but this one has decided to uh, give me this beautiful blossom. This is actually a bract, and the real flowers are right here. Uh, as a banana flowers, it actually, the, the bud actually elongates and these bracts fall off. And where the flowers are pollinated, it will actually set fruit. And you can see down here at the base of this cluster, I have little red bananas forming. Technically, they're edible. They wouldn't hurt you if you ate them, but they're probably not going to be very palatable. Uh, I'm hoping, though, that they'll go ahead and ripen before the end of the season, and I'll get a good crop of seed out of these. A great addition to the garden, a nice size banana. This is full grown, so I'm six feet. This is about six and a half. So for those of you who can't uh, have something like Musa Bosju or one of those 15-foot bananas in your garden, this is a good uh, alternative. And then right here at my feet is a new variety of holly. This is actually a, a Nellie R. Stevens holly, but it's one that has golden new growth, bright yellow new growth. And uh, you can see that some of the leaves have turned green now late in the season. But once this is in the ground, the whole plant will be bright yellow throughout the year. And I think they've just given it a brilliant marketing name. The name for this one is going to be Huo Nelly. It's on the market now, but only in limited quantities, and uh, I think will be very popular over the next few years. This little guy is actually very rare. This is a variegated pine called Golden Ghost. And um, it's not very big now, but it was even smaller when I first bought it. In fact, it was so small that this is one of those uh, collections I made when I was traveling at a conference that I was at. And this little pine tree came home in my suitcase. So it was in a one gallon pot, it was about six inches tall, and uh, now it's up to about two feet. It's been in the ground about a year and a half or so, and it's grown quite well, but you can see that um, the very ends of the needles are green and the entire rest of the needle is kind of a cream color. So overall, it looks almost golden or chartreuse in the landscape. And eventually, it will get on up to 10 or 12 feet, 
the banana tree won't be here forever. Um, and eventually this will become the dominant feature in this bed and other plants will move around it. This is a plant that I'm particularly fond of. A lot of people have sort of a, a bad perspective on cannas, but I really like them in the garden. And this is a particularly unusual one. This is a variety called Canna Emanii, and this is an old hybrid from the 1870s. And the thing that I like about it so much is that the flowers actually kind of cascade off of the end of the stem. It's a great carmine red color, kind of a pinky red, but it's just so graceful. Big bold foliage like most of the cannas have. And to give you an idea of how fast this grew, uh, I actually tried to get this for two or three years and they were sold out every year. And finally this spring, uh, I was able to get my hands on one plant and it came wrapped in a plastic bag with one shoot on it. That was in April. It's September now of the same year. So basically in five months time, from one tiny little shoot in a plastic bag, I have a seven foot plant that is four or five feet wide behind me. Um, I'm not sure about hardiness on this. I will actually dig a small chunk of this at the end of the season, pot it up and take it um, into an area that I have that doesn't freeze for the winter and uh, plant it back out in the spring and I'll leave the rest of the clump in the ground to see about how hardy it's going to be. So one last favorite that I thought I would share with everybody. Uh, succulents have been all the rage the last two or three years and uh, this is a particularly nice plant and this is actually an easy house plant. This is Agave Desmediana Joe Hoke and um, it does have a spine on the end of the leaf but not nearly as lethal as most agaves are. This is actually a soft leafed agave, it's pretty flexible and it does make a really good house plant because it's tolerant of lower light levels. This comes in for the winter it goes in front of a bright window. I barely water it. I hardly pay any attention to it at all. The following spring, I bring it back out and set it in a shady spot first to get it reacclimated and then slowly move it into more sun. But this, the variegation pattern on this particular plant is just really stunning and it has become one of my favorite uh, container plants that I own. So you just have to keep your eye out for plants that you think are particularly good looking or kind of cool. Uh, go to some of those great websites like Plant Delights Nursery and some of the purveyors of more rare and unusual things. Just be aware that when you get into the rare and unusual things, success is not always a guarantee. Sometimes plants haven't been trialed well. Some things may be touted as being hardy that really aren't. You're taking a little bit more of a chance with some of these plants, but the reward when it's successful is well worth the effort and have a great time doing it.